In this video, I'm going to run through everything that you need to know about gas liquid chromatography for A-level. Now, like all chromatography, there is a mobile phase and a stationary phase. The mobile phase is an inert carrier gas such as helium or nitrogen, and the sample is injected into the stream of this gas before it flows over the stationary phase. It's important that the sample mixture itself is volatile so that it evaporates on injection into the inert carrier gas and it's carried through the column. The column itself is housed in an oven and this allows us to either keep the temperature stable if we're after a constant flow rate or change the temperature which is a great way of improving the separation of substances in the mixture. So what is the stationary phase? Well, basically, it's just a really long column, up to 100 metres long, and we can pack it with either an inert solid coated in a liquid, or we can coat the liquid onto the inside of a very thin silica capillary tube. This liquid, i.e. the liquid that's making up the stationary phase, has got to be stable and non-volatile. We don't want it to vanish with the carrier gas as it flows past. Let's look at this in a little more detail. The non-volatile liquid is often a long chain siloxane polymer, which is chemically bonded to the silica tube. And as the sample flows through the column, the different substances in the mixture are separated out because they have different solubilities in this liquid. This polymer is a good choice because we can easily change the side groups on the chain. For example, the methyl group for maybe a cyanide group or a benzene ring. And hence we can influence the types of intermolecular bonding that happen between the stationary phase and the substances in the mixture. This is how we can use GLC to separate out a wide range of mixtures. The result of this separation is a computer-generated chromatogram showing a number of peaks. and Each peak corresponds to one of the substances in our mixture. The area under a peak is proportional to the concentration or amount of each substance in the mixture. And we can use the retention times to identify different peaks or substances by comparing with retention times of known compounds, assuming that the flow rate, the temperature, the mobile and the stationary phases are all standardised. We can see here in this chromatogram for petrol that if we have a pair of isomers, for example 2-methylbutane and pentane, the branched isomer has a slightly greater affinity for the mobile phase and so a shorter retention time. It flows through the column at a faster rate than straight chain isomer. Carbons with a greater molecular mass and a longer carbon chain, such as decane for example, have a greater affinity for the stationary phase and a longer retention time. In both cases this makes sense because molecules that have a greater affinity for the stationary phase are generally capable of making stronger intermolecular bonds. There are a couple of advantages for gas liquid chromatography. Firstly, it's fast. A mixture of over 100 compounds can be analysed in just a couple of hours. And if we need to identify the different compounds rather than simply separate them out, then we can hook this up to a mass spectrometer. And then we get a mass spectrum for each of the peaks, giving us the molecular ion peak and the fragmentation pattern for that particular substance. As always, there's a link and a blurb to the Crunch Chemistry website where you can find the notes that accompany this video, as well as exam tips and tricks and everything that you need to help you get through A-level. If this has been useful, then please like, share and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to a small channel like us. I look forward to seeing you next time.